Les vous avec nous à nos avalons, nouvelles les plus fameux. Je m'appelle Manny Elvik. Nous sommes aujourd'hui dans la belle toile de la croix concentrée à l'océan et la mort de X. This is the American Channel. Oh! Welcome back to Fake News. And we got the realest news for you. My name is Phil. Today we have been discussing very disappointing news related to Oceania and the rising water levels. When you think of Oceania, normally places like Australia come to mind. And when you think of Australia, warm, sunny, sandy beaches and palm trees swaying in the cool, moist afternoon breeze come to mind. But before we know it, this dream home location might disappear by the beginning of 21,000. Hello everyone! Uh, Marco! Oh, Polo! <laughs> Oh, hi, did not know he was over here. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Polo Fredison and today, once again, we are here to talk about climate change. In today's episode, our problem today is Oceania and how sea levels are rising dramatically. So, with how climate change is affecting people, this is a huge issue. Pacific Islands states are some of the most vocal <laughs> advocates of aggressive carbon reduce targets said by Wolf Paraguay. Villagers across the North Pacific Oceans are slowly being submerged with the water from the melting ice caps. Citizens are trying to solve this problem, mostly trying to find places to move. Probably thinking, how are they planning on surviving? Well, just in luck, because that is just what my fellow colleagues and me are about to tell you. To fake news, I'm Anna and today we will be talking about climate change in Oceania. The climate change for <laughs> countries in Oceania, such as Tuvalu and Kiribati, is the sea levels rising. They have been dangerously rising because of carbon emissions, which forces islanders to move out so they can have better life. They may never come back to their flooded land. Hello, I am Potato from Fake News. So you're a potato? No. My name is Poe Space Tato. Not to be confused with this vegetable. Help the islands and the people because of Oceania. Because it can soon become a problem to the United States. Places like Miami, 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 and New Amsterdam could be affected by rising sea levels. Not only the United States is in danger, but places like Lisbon, Portugal, and Ham Hamburg, Germany is in danger too. We can help save the people in our homes. You may be the only one person, but that could make a big difference. The Pacific Island nations are all physically and economically vulnerable from climate change to extreme weather. With prospects of rising seas and intensifying storms, they will threaten the very existence and livelihoods of large segments of nations. For example, half of the village population of Big Yanbu could be an undonated by 2050. This could come from sea level rises with storm surges according to a World Bank study. Now to get back what you've all been wanting. Starting from where I've been just telling you, villagers have been collecting giant sandbags and been filling them up with huge border or dam, wherever you like to call it. With this, they plan on building their barrier so high that they can keep the water out and away from the homes and crops. A population of 11,000 people, or in just one island is a bunch of people to find a new home just because the home is being submerged by If you feel like you're safe just because you don't live on these Pacific Islands, then you're wrong. 414 U.S. cities will be facing the same problem. This is the reason why you need to help them because they were the first targets and they won't be long to reach more cities in the United States. Boss located 3.37 degrees south and 168.73 degrees west is likely to be swimming with the fishes by the end of the century. These low-lying islands have a front row seat as climate change puts everyone and everything in jeopardy. 100,000 people are being affected by the unknown change. Due to rising water levels, salt water has contaminated the lush water supply and crop soil. To be more specific, the island of Kiribati may disappear into the vast never-ending ocean. The villagers are finding ways to protect their home by making a barricade made of things such as coral, rock, and sandbags. If we were to combine the total number of acres everyone in Kiribati has bought, it'd have a grand total of 6,000 acres on the island of Fiji. Here's Poe with an update on the troublesome complication. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yet showing in the Kiribati island, but we'll 
be soon. It will show by causeways would be washed away with an improving econ economy and right along with that are degraded reefs damaged by warming water allow strong waves to slam against the coast. Not only will the degraded reefs allow stronger waves, but would increase erosion and disrupt the food supply, food, food supply which depends heavily on fish. In this case, the island's death. The government has also promoted migration with dignity, which urges people to consider moving. The people could either move to a new island or towards the center of their island they're on already. The people are trying to solve this problem with developing water management plans, built, built coastal seawalls, planting mangroves, mangroves, and installing rainwater harvesting systems. The Solomon Islands are about 1,000 miles northeast of Australia. Five uninhabited islands have been completely flooded. Two other islands, however, were inhabited. The villages of those islands were obliterated because of the flooding. Not only is the sea level rising, but the temperature of the sea has been rising dangerously. That has greatly affected marine life. Sea creatures are dying, so there is less fish for the islanders. Which is another reason why they can't live there. This ultimately calls for support from developing partners and international financial mechanisms such as the In Tiban Jainuko Lagoon, 200 meters of the land was flooded. Islanders moved to other islands, Australia and New Zealand. Entire popula populations could thus become stateless, said the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. The, island, the islanders really worry about being seen as nothing more than just refugees. We can also help reduce the effects of climate change by throwing out less garbage or no garbage if you can. That was definitely a journey. Thanks everyone. Looking at the lower part of the Pacific Islands, we are now looking at our fishing stuff. Some people would think that with one island already submerged and water dried, this could help have more room to bring boats in and to collect fish and food. This is, if you was one of those people who are trying to make this situation very positive about, then you're wrong. Even though the island's already submerged, then it's true that boats can pass through without hitting anything or getting knocked into islands. But there's no fish. With the heat and new climate change, fish are getting smaller and the reefs are dying and due to silt washing out from highlands. Fish are dying and killing off the villagers' food supply. Since their fish food supplies are dying off, people are trying to find new ways to grow food if that works with a ton of water. As of now, the people are using mangrove trees as a food supply. Five Pacific Island villages have their fate sealed underwater. Now the question is, who is next? Hello, Phil here, to talk about the tragic ending of the five Pacific Islands. Just as my fellow news anchors have informed you, rising sea levels have put a majority of the island population at risk. Climate change has sunken its hook deep into Oceania. Now, a large proportion of the island is flooded. In said flooded areas, the freshwater supply is infected with human waste and seawater. Soil erosion is also playing a part in this dastardly arrangement. The soil er erosion is making it hard to grow plants used for food. The people of these establishments are taking action. They are relocating to a different, safer island, or they move in more towards the center of the island. Here's Polo with more information. If you didn't already know, with all this water, people are trying to grow farms, other critters are catching on. Sharks, stingrays, and falling along mosquitoes are also seeking for food. And is now trying to stay around with people. More hiding in the crops and farms is trying to mosquitoes are breeding and laying eggs in the water, making it unsanitary and deadly. One thousand people are slowly dying from this disease and the mosquitoes are bringing to their home. Your polar friend has said about to sum up everything I just explained to you about Oceania, in case she just forgot. At the beginning, I talked about the rising sea levels and water, and how people are trying to find ways to stay at their homes and keep the flooding out. Second was about the low supply of fishing stocks and how the islands are starting to submerge. This was really showing how we tried to find ways around food shortages and growing our own food in food and water. Last was about farms and crops, and where predators and deadly mosquitoes are killing off the population. Hope you learned something new today. 